Monty, you have been so instrumental in uh, kind of pointing me in the right direction. And- <laughs> it was about um, looking at your character defect in spirituality. Uh, it, it's the integration of clinical practices with uh, the 12 steps. It's an absolute pleasure. He certainly knows a lot of people. Uh, he's got a lot of energy. And sometimes when you don't have so much energy, he picks you up and carries and you. And the Monty man there certainly helps. This is one of the places that is about the business of the solution. The views expressed on this special broadcast of the Take 12 Radio Show do not necessarily reflect those of KHLT Recovery Broadcasting or its affiliates. KHLT is not affiliated with any particular 12-step fellowship. Now here's that guy who's getting less popular minute by minute, your host, The Multiman. Well, greetings, family. Welcome to another fine episode here of Take 12 Radio, Recovery Radio, broadcasting to you from the studios of KHLT Recovery Broadcasting in beautiful downtown Albany, Oregon. How the heck are you guys today? I'm glad you joined us. Uh, We've got a great show for you today, some great music. And uh, our our guest is going to be sharing uh, his experience, his strength, his hope, and uh, about his relationship with the God who is God. And uh, got kind of a, a miraculous story uh, of rescue to tell you about in his story as well as sharing his music. Andrew Kwan is my guest this week. Uh, before we talk to Andrew, though, I, I have a um, I have an announcement that I that I want to get out there. Uh, for those of you who have never experienced donkey basketball. Uh, you really need to. It is, uh, it, it's humorous, it's entertaining, and it's absolutely crazy. And this is for a really good cause. Uh, Tuesday, April the 1st, at the Lynn County Fair and Expo Center uh, here in Albany, Oregon, is a, uh, a benefit basketball game for Coach Jason uh, Henkel. Uh, Jason Hinkle is a, is a coach at uh, the South Albany High School, and he, uh, he has stomach cancer. And this is to raise funds uh, for his family to defray some of the, uh, the expenses for treatment. As many of you who know that have been through this kind of thing, uh, the expenses, the medical expenses are just horrific. And uh, so uh, we're trying to raise some money and some awareness. Lynn County Fair and Expo Center, Tuesday, April 1st, uh, donkey basketball to raise money for uh, Coach Hankel uh, to help defray costs. Now, listen, tickets are are $10 for adults and $6 for students. And uh, children uh, K through uh, sixth grade are only $4. And you can get your tickets at the South Albany High School, the location uh, we'll have here uh, up on the website at uh, South Albany. Or you could call us here at Take12Radio.com at 541-971-6445, and we'll give you the information. So don't forget, Tuesday, April 1st, Lynn County Fairgrounds Donkey Basketball for Coach Hankel to defray costs for uh, his cancer treatment. All right. <clears throat> uh, our email address here is take12radio at comcast.net. The website, if you're following along on your smartphone or a tablet is take12radio.com. My guest this week is uh, recording artist Andrew Kwan. And uh, I, I heard Andrew's music here some time ago and uh, was so moved by it. I, I really wanted him to come on the show and uh, share really what it is he does, his ministry, and a little bit about his story. Andrew Kwan began making music early on in his life and joined a Korean pop group at the age of 17. For three years, he sang as the lead vocalist for the group SPR and toured all over Korea. In 2000, Andrew moved back to the United States, and at a men's church retreat, he had a personal encounter with Jesus Christ. And we're going to ask him to share about that here in a minute. He decided to dedicate his life and the gifts God had given him to make music for God and to touch other people's lives. Soon after, through a mutual friend, Andrew had an opportunity to meet a producer named James Choi 
And uh, they began a collaboration that lasted for years up until the present day. And in 2004, they released their first album titled Armor of God. Though the style varies throughout the album, it delivers the common message of hope and faith in Jesus Christ. Years later, uh, James moved closer to Andrew uh, to Los Angeles. It was there that Andrew recorded the second album, New Life, and released it in September 2006. Uh, Andrew has studied uh, church music at Portland Bible College and has worked as a music director at his church for several years now and continues to work with James on other Christian artist albums as well. Andrew, welcome to Take 12 Radio, my friend. Thanks for having me. I feel so honored and blessed to be here. Absolutely. Now, some people are are wondering, uh, on a on a drug and alcohol recovery radio station, why would we have a uh, Christian recording uh, artist on the show? Well, I'll tell you why. Because you folks that have listened to me now for a number of years know me well enough to know that this is a faith based, solution focused radio station. And we believe very strongly, without apology, that it is our relationship with our Creator, the God who is God, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, uh, that is what what people uh, have been separated from way too long. And in the first step of the 12 steps, it says, we admitted we were powerless over alcohol and that our lives had become unmanageable. Um, I often say, Andrew, that I wish people, I wish it would have said, we admitted we were powerless over our separation from God and that our lives had become unmanageable because really it's our separation from God that has gotten us into the the pickle uh, called the human dilemma that we are in. We are about solution here at Take 12 Radio, and we believe we have the solution to all sorts of life's issues, including addiction, and that is through a relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, Andrew, uh, let me ask you this. Were were you always a believer, or was there a part of your life that you kind of did your own thing? Well, yeah, I mean, I I actually grew up in a Christian family, but I was not a believer until later in my life. Uh Uh-huh. And because when I was a teenage, when I was 17, I went to Korea to pursue a music career. But that's when I fell rock bottom. Mm. I, I dealt with all kinds of addictions and lived a party lifestyle for years. But by God's grace, I mean, I was able to come back to God and like a prodigal son. Yeah, yeah. So you, you were in Korea until how old? Uh, I was. 22, I believe. Yeah, I was 22. Okay. And, and, and so did, did you get yourself into trouble with the law over there, or, or was it just mainly just health issues? Yeah, it was more of, like, addictions and um, yeah. just uh, just party lifestyle, like, daily. Did you know, and did you know, though, in the back of your mind that even though you were living this way, that something was going to have to change? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I felt wrong about what I was doing and how I was living. And that's one of the reasons that I broke the contract with the company and I wanted to come back to the States. Mm. So you had a music contract over in Korea and because you wanted to change your life, you, you had to sever those ties? Yes. Yeah. Because I had issues like insomnia, anxiety disorder, um, depression. Mm. Those were all the results of my bad choices. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 what happened? Tell, tell us what happened. You came over to the United States, and what changed? Well, I came home and uh, and I met a girl who is now my wife, and I wanted to impress her parents, so I started attending her church. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and her her dad took me to a men's retreat, and. Well, he wanted to get to know me better, so he took me there, but God had greater plans than that. Right. And during the worship time, I I felt like I I needed to be right with God. You know, this is not the right way to go, like the way I've been living. And I just realized, like, that I was a sinner. And uh, just I asked God to forgive me, and 
received Jesus into my heart, and I felt a huge burden lifted off of me. Like, all this weight was just gone all of a sudden. And that's when I began truly to submit my life to Christ. And, and, and so, after your, your conversion experience, after your spiritual awakening, let's say, uh, did everything get better, or did you still have to deal with life on life's terms? Well, because I believe there's two things. One of them is that instant. There's, there's something that changes instantly. Sure. But there are things that is ongoing as well, and then you gotta you have to continue to deal with. Um, because I've been living this kind of lifestyle for for many years, and so it, it didn't change right away. But but as I was walking with the Lord, it was by little by little I was um, taking that step, and finally God broke free of all kinds of bondages that I had in my life. So so did you struggle with any of those bondages? Uh, even though you'd become a Christian, that were, were were they difficult to break? Oh, it, it took years. Yes. Yeah. I I became saved in two thousand three, and it took about three to four years to actually uh, completely break those bondages. And um, during those times, it was kind of like I would fall and then I would repent, mm-hmm. and then and then I would fall again. But those uh, increments would get longer and longer. I would fall. Uh, after six months, and then I would repent, and, that, and then after eight or nine months, I would fall again, and then it becomes one year, and it became two years, and then finally, it was completely free. Yeah, yeah. So so the process, it, it, there was a healing and a restoration process going on, even though there were some slips there, it, 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 was, it was a good thing that was happening. So the good news is, even though we may struggle with our old nature, uh, if we keep pressing forward and pressing into God, he presses into us, and, and things do change eventually, true? That is true. Yeah. But, but prayer was a really big thing for me, um, prayer and, and fasting. Those two things I really recommend, because what God does is that as we pray and spend our time in his presence, he completely transforms our minds, just like just like the Bible in Romans 12 talks about that, uh, being transformed by renewing of your mind. As we, as we spend time with in, in His presence, He'll change our perspective, and you'll be able to think more clearly and make the right choices. Sure, sure. Uh, you mentioned fasting. Uh, the first time you did that, was that hard? Oh, it was very hard. But, <laughs> <laughs> but that's um, one of those things that, you know, when... When our prayer doesn't is not answered right away, when we fast, usually God answers those prayers because we're saying, God, you know, I'm giving up something that's important to me. I really need your help. Right, right. Because we know fasting requires a total dependence on on God for uh, for our for the discipline to do it, for the strength physically and mentally. Because when you fast. Uh, you are removing something from your life that you're normally used to, uh, and, and so it, it takes it takes a lot of discipline. But it, it's only a discipline I know that I can only do with God's help. I can't do it on, under my own power, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, okay, Andrew. So you were doing music before this. Um, how did you get involved? with, uh, you know, the music that you're doing now? I mean, what, what first happened to change your music style? Well, when I became saved, um, the gear just shifted from writing music for the world to writing for God, because what he's done in my life was amazing, and it's, it wasn't hard to write music um, to him, mm-hmm. because he's, he's done so many, so, so many things in my life that uh, it just... I just felt like it was the right thing to do um, instead of trying to impress people and trying to uh, get the love from the, the crowd. Right. Um, I just felt like now that he's done this for my life, like I want to do something for God. Right. You know? But when I did that, it was for, it kind of started out as my intimate time with him more than like I did it for people. So it was kind of between me and God. Like the songs I've, I've written wasn't really shared. To others, um, but the more I, I write music, the more it began to go out. And recently, um, I noticed 
more and more that God is opening the door to share these songs, and people are being blessed by it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, they they are an absolute blessing, and we're gonna we're gonna take a short break. When we come back, we're gonna listen to this first song called "You Are the Reason," and I'm gonna have uh, you introduce that song and explain it to us. So, folks, don't go away. More with my guest, a recording artist, God's recording artist, Andrew Kwan. When we return. Origins Recovery Centers provides integrated inpatient treatment for substance abuse and co-occurring disorders. At Origins, clients receive expert medical, clinical, and spiritual care individually designed for their needs. Our clients leave Origins with the foundation upon which they will build the rest of their lives. Call now to speak with an admissions specialist. Our toll-free number is 888-843-8935. That's 888-843-8935. Origins, delivering real solutions for real families. <clears throat> Pardon me, dude, are you in the rooms? Bro, I've been going to meetings for years. Yeah, but dude, but are you in the rooms? Bro, I'm in meetings all the time. Of course I'm in the rooms. Yeah, but are you registered on in the rooms? Bro, you're not making any sense. Dude. Pay attention. I'm talking about InTheRooms.com. It's only the world's largest online recovery social networking site Mm -hmm. for recovery folks like you and me, dude, or anyone seeking help from any addiction. You, You get exclusive free access to daily meditations, speaker tapes, and daily online video AA and NA meetings, dude. There are close to 300,000 members who are willing to share their experience, strength, and hope with you, dude. With me? Yeah, with you. Here's what you do. What's that? Get on your computer, your smartphone, or your tablet and type in www.intherooms.com. It's for fun and for free, dude. Dude, what are you doing? Well... I just did what you said. Now, I'm in the rooms. Dude, bro, we're both in the rooms. Dude, bro, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude. Hey, bro, uh, I'm hungry. Are you in the pizza? Dude. Oh, dude. In the rooms, the world's largest recovery social networking site with something for everybody. Visit www.intherooms.com and register for free. All right, and we returned, and my guest this week is Andrew Kwan, uh, really a, a gospel recording artist in his own right. Uh, he is uh, is a man who uh, did live a life for himself and now is living for God, has turned his will and his life over to the care of Jesus Christ, and is singing for Jesus Christ, and in doing so, uh, gets to share uh, this marvelous gift that God has given him. Uh, with the rest of us. Uh, you Are the Reason. Andrew, introduce us to this song. You're, you're the Reason is a song that I wrote after an incident from my honeymoon, which I got lost. In a, oh, yeah. Tell us about that. This is amazing. Um, yeah, for our honeymoon, we went to a secluded cabin in Elgin, Oregon. Mm-hmm. And it was, like, hidden deep in the forest. So when we arrived, the owner had to come and meet us. And we followed him with our car. And they fed us breakfast for every meal. <laughs> but by the third day, we were ready for some meat. And we decided to drive out into the town uh, to get some dinner, some steak and potatoes, something like that. And, but on our way there, the car got stuck in the snow. And it was February, and there was about a foot of snow on the ground. Um, the more we tried to get out, the car would go deeper into the ground. So thinking we hadn't gone too far, we decided, let's walk back to the cabin. We didn't realize there were many folks in the road, and quickly we got lost. We walked for more than eight hours. Uh, Soon it got dark, and we couldn't see our hands. We thought that if we kept on walking, we might even walk off a cliff. So we stopped and laid our jackets on the ground and laid down together trying to stay warm. Um, By this time, we could not see our hands and feet. We were starting to get frostbite. Mm. I started to lose hope, and there were no signs of life around us. And our voices were lost from screaming for help. Finally, we fell asleep, holding each other, and woke up after maybe an hour or so. I didn't think 
we would be able to make it through the night alive. If we didn't freeze or starve, we we thought there would be other dangers, like a wild animal. Sure. And I cried out to God. I prayed for a miracle that somehow we we would survive. And by this time, we had been lost for more than 12 hours. And it was only getting colder as we huddled together for a warmth. Um, And I, I was thinking that if I died today, all my hard work, all my savings account, my dreams, my friends, nothing would be able to get me to heaven. After about an, another hour, we saw something in the distance, and it was headlights. And they were coming our way as if they were coming to rescue us. Um, we discovered that the driver was not alone. There was a newborn baby in the back seat sleeping, and it was around midnight. So we asked him, like, what are you doing at this time so late? And this is out of... Um, out in the woods, what are you doing? And he told me that the baby couldn't sleep. So we were tr- trying to get, trying to drive the baby around in her car. Wow. Um, the next morning, the owner of the cabin drove us to our car to pull, pull the car out, and he told us that only one car would drive by every two weeks or, or so in that area. And sometimes we feel hopeless in the situation we're in, like, like nothing or nobody would be able to get us out. But whether it's being lost in the middle of nowhere or whether it's dealing with addiction, there's always a way out. Yeah. If we desperately seek him, nothing is too difficult for God. And that's when I wrote the song, You Are the Reason. All right. That's a powerful story. Here you are in the middle of nowhere. Uh, through human eyes, it seems like there is absolutely no way out. And you and your wife are probably going to fall asleep and not wake up. And in the middle of it, God hears you and comes and rescues you. Here is You Are the Reason by Andrew Kwan. Oh! 
You are the reason, Andrew Kwan. Wow. When you write your music, what what is going through your mind, man? I mean, I know it's going through your heart, but when you sit down and, and write, do you, do you write the words first? Do you write the music first? How does it come to you? Oh, usually the music first. Yeah. And then I have uh, I have many lyric sheets that I already have um, compiled. Right. And then I would I would put them together. Those lyric sheets are kind of like my letter, my experiences, and my letter to God. And and then when I compose a melody, then I find the one that fits. Right. So. When you put a song like this together, do you believe in your heart of hearts that the Spirit of God is is working through you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's completely a miracle to for these melodies to fit the letter that I've written to God. It just fits perfectly. Sure. And that's how, yeah. And I write most of the songs like after reading the Bible. Mm-hmm. And I want my songs to be, like, full of God's Word. I want people to hear the Word of God through my music. Yeah. For example, I've, I've had some non-believers that, who listen to my music, and they like the melody and style. And they continue to listen to it, and they, not knowing that they're actually listening to it, uh, the truth. Sure. They, they actually listen to the Word of God. Um you, 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 you know, you drove that point home with this song so well. You know, he really is the reason for everything. Even people that don't believe in him, they don't take a breath without his power, do they? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, everything has has to be just right for us to be able to breathe or... Yeah. Um, you know, if, if the sun was even a little bit closer, then we would burn. Right. You know, we, we have to realize that. It's pretty amazing. It is pretty doggone amazing. And when you think of your story about how God rescued you from a seemingly hopeless situation, he, he really started doing that earlier earlier in your life when he rescued you from addiction. Because through man's eyes, addiction is, is well, we know it's the number one health threat in our in our country. And and yet God is able to conquer that. If he's able to conquer that, he could conquer anything. Uh, and, and what he did for for you and your wife that that was just that's just amazing. Uh, what what a great story. Well, so we're going to take another break. We come back. We've got two more songs to listen to. So folks, don't go away. More with my guest Andrew Kwan when we come back. Men, women, and their families experience tremendous pain and suffering due to the struggles they face from substance abuse and its co-occurring mental health challenges. They need to find a safe place for peace and healing. Therapia Addiction Healing Center was born out of a deep desire to provide that safe and powerful healing environment. Therapia exists to help people recover from addictions by developing and maintaining healthy, meaningful relationships with God, self, and others. To speak with an addiction specialist, call 1-855-652-4325. That's 1-855-652-4325. Or visit our website at www.therapia.net. Therapia Addiction Healing Center. Restoring lives one step at a time. Serenity Springs Recovery Center. Located on the beautiful east coast of Florida, a unique facility that is committed to providing exceptional individual care in small group settings while utilizing their experienced and dedicated clinical and support staff of licensed therapists and doctors. Visit their website, serenitysprings.recovery.com or call 386-423-4540. Serenity Springs, making a life-changing investment into your recovery. Right, and we have returned, and our guest this week is Andrew Kwan. Uh, he's a recording artist. He is singing for God, and uh, he is one thankful person, I'll tell you. Uh, God bringing him out of a world of addiction and, and living for himself to now living uh, for for his creator. And, and uh, I, I know you bless the heart of God when you write and when you sing, and I know he blesses you, my friend. Uh, tell us about this song, Let All the Earth. 
Let All Be Yours is a song written after uh, reading John 1.5. Um, the song starts out with the verse, I met a man who knows me well, even better than myself. And that this man that I met existed from the beginning with God, and everything was created through him. Mm. And, uh, and this guy wants to have an intimate relationship with me. So that's unbelievable to me, that to think that God of this, the ruler of this universe wants to be my friend yeah, and, and my father. So that's kind of the whole theme of the song. And the chorus, it talks about, let all the earth exalt his name above all names, uh, kind of corporate worship element to this um, chorus, like a, like a church um, worship song. Right. Well, here is Let All the Earth, and it is a mind blower that the, that the creator of the universe, the God who is God, the God of all, desires to have a personal relationship with us. Listen to this song, Let All the Earth, and see if you can't uh, get, a, get a, grap, a, a, a good grip on this because it's really true, folks. God wants to have an intimate relationship with every single one of us. Even the rocks will cry out, He is Lord. Here's Let All the Earth by Andrew Kwan.
Andrew Kwan is our guest this week, and his music, uh, Let All the Earth, uh, a powerful testimony of of uh, God's relationship with us and us recognizing who he is, uh, this, this loving father, this creator of the universe who desires to have a personal relationship with you and I every single day. Um, a- a- Andrew... Uh, now I want I want to make sure that the listeners understand that that uh, God has given really has anointed you with a, a wonderful voice and has given you a tremendous gift to write and compose music. Uh, do you write all the music that you sing, or just some of it? I do write all the music, and I compose together with a partner. Tell tell us about your, the person you compose with. Well, his name is James Choi, and he. Uh, he does a lot of soundtrack for movies, mm-hmm. but, and he's a born-again believer. And I got to meet him right after I became saved. Wow. And, yeah, it's like God put us together, and we've been working for the last 11 years on not just our projects, but on other artists' projects as well. And who are some of the other artists that you've been working with? Well, they're mostly a Korean contemporary Christian artist. Uh huh. Is 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 contemporary Christian music? Is that a big deal in Korea? It is. It's uh, the market isn't very huge, but right. Uh, Korea is mostly a Christian country, and there, uh, there's a lot of artists. Wow. They Did... usually come to uh, Los Angeles to record. Hmm. And the friend of mine that I work with, he he's involved in many of their projects. Have you had an opportunity to go to go back to Korea since your conversion? I actually did with my wife and my kids last year just to visit. Yeah. It was a very different experience. Yeah, because now you're going with a whole new set of glasses, right? Right, right. Yeah. For many years, I kind of didn't want to go back there because of the memories I had. Right. But after about 10 years or so, God really healed me and... I wanted to take my family. My wife is not Korean, but she wanted to go and visit uh, my country where I was born. Well, that's 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 a wonderful wife to to want to do that. That that's great. And you guys have been married how long? Uh, for eleven years now. Eleven years, and, and how many kids do you have? We have two children: a two-year-old and a four-year-old. Beautiful. Uh, they're both girls. Do you think they're musically inclined? I think so, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And actually, our, our older daughter, who is now four and a half. Right. She was born extremely premature, uh, about three months early. Wow. And she was born at two pounds. And when, when she was born, the doctors told us, like, something has to be wrong with her because, you know, nobody who's born at 26 weeks can be normal. Yeah. But she's perfectly fine. She, she has no, no issues. She's actually smarter than other kids her age. <laughs> <I'm Erica. laughs> there you go. There you go. Wow. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Um, <clears throat> okay, before we listen to this last song, uh, tell the listeners, is there a way folks can get a hold of your music? Yes, I actually just uh, opened a, a website. Okay. An official website, uh, andrewquanmusic.com. AndrewQuanMusic.com. <clears throat> not a very, uh, I'm not a very social media type of person, right? But I decided to open up <clears throat> Twitter and those things so that more people can be blessed by it. You bet, you bet. And our okay, so you live in the Portland area. Uh, what church do you go to, Andrew? I go to Japanese International Baptist Church. Japanese International Baptist. That's an interesting title right there in itself. <laughs> yeah. And we have an English service that I attend. Well, I'm not a director of the music right now. Like, that's, that's my former church. But uh-huh. we led up to this church, and I'm involved in worship team and supporting uh, our church. Right. Right. E- excellent. My, my son... Our youngest boy, who's 16, is on the worship team at our church. And I, I tell you, it's just, it's, it's just so wonderful to, to see him up there. We have, we have a large church, so the worship team rotates 
um, the members of it, of it rotate. And so he's like the first Sunday of every month he, he's playing up front. And boy, there's just nothing like knowing that your kids are covered in the blood. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. I, I, it's just it's just so great, and it sounds like your family's just a beautiful family. I, I hope that that one day you and I can meet face to face. We we don't live very far from you, uh, and so someday I hope that we can do that. Um, Andrew, tell us about this song. Speak of you. This one is also a little bit like little little of the earth. It's, I talk about attributes of God. Um, how I want to speak about his wonder, how wonderful he is. Everything, all the beauty surrounding us is made by him. And there's a verse in the song that says, he gives orders to thunderstorms and raises his voice to the dark clouds. Mm. And at the sound of his voice, they will obey. So this verse came to my mind after reading Matthew 28, 23. There's a lot more out there. When, when Jesus rebuked the winds and the seas, no matter how big the obstacle is, like we serve a God who is more than able to calm these storms in our life. Wow, yeah, yeah. And, you know, there's people that, there are people that worship the creation rather than the creator. Mm-hmm. And it, it always confuses me because why would I want to do that? Why Why wouldn't I want to worship the one who made all this stuff, that made the right. stars? I, I mean, why not? You know, uh, so Speak of You definitely speaks to this. Here we go, folks. Andrew Kwan, Speak of You.
Speak of you, Andrew Kwan is our guest this week. Uh, thank you so much, Andrew, for that. Uh, people can, you can go to Andrew's website at andrewkwanmusic.com. You can follow the links, uh, right here at Take 12 Radio on Friday's page. And, uh, you can rewind this, listen to this show over again. Now, now, can they buy CDs from you or download your music? How do they do that? They can download my, my music at my website. At your website, okay. You have even more songs, correct? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, have, yeah. Um, yeah, I have about 30, around 30 songs. About 30 songs. So I, I put about 11 songs that Okay. my favorite. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, Andrew, you have such a gentle spirit, and uh, and your voice is, at the same time, is gentle, but yet very powerful. It is obvious that God's anointing is on you. And uh, I, I just appreciate your willingness to come on and share your faith and your music here at Take 12 Radio, my friend. I'm so honored to uh, be part of this. And I just want to continue to write and record music and for His glory, everything for His glory. And everything is because of His grace. Yeah. Thank you for having me today. A- absolutely, absolutely. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, folks, andrewquanmusic.com. That's A-N-D-R-E-W-K-W-O-N music.com. Follow the links here at Take 12 Radio. Uh, we've, we've heard three songs today. Andrew's got more, uh, for you. You can hear his music on our music sets as well. If you click on Recovery Music, we have three hour looping music sets of recovery recording artists. Uh, positive music, music from people that have come out of addiction, uh, who are writing now to celebrate their new life right here at Take12Radio.com. Andrew Kwan has been my guest. Thank you folks so much for tuning in. Remember our email address, Take12Radio.com. Also, uh, our website rather, uh, also Donkey Basketball. Don't forget Tuesday, April 1st, uh, uh, at the uh, Lynn County Fair and Expo Center. Uh, benefiting uh, Judge, or uh, excuse me, Judge, uh, Coach uh, Jason Hinkle uh, from uh, South Albany High School, uh, a great coach and a friend of so many uh, suffering from stomach cancer. The money goes to help defray some of those expenses. Uh, contact South Albany High School or West Albany High School or contact us here at Take12Radio.com on your internet dial. Until our next broadcast. This is the Monty Man along with Andrew Kwan, our guest this week, and we are wishing God's perfect serenity for you. Bye-bye, my friends. We'll talk to you soon. This has been a broadcast of KHLT Recovery Broadcasting. Kitty, 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 kitty.